How many more houses do I need to build? More houses. But, but I'm the best. But are you a lip cuck and a bass trad? What the f does that mean, Kobe Bryant? You're welcome. What the f is he talking about? Do you want to have sex? Sex. Do you want a bus? Bus. Your broke ass is not gonna get any sort of private parts if you still live with your mom and especially if you wanna raise a family. Low key, I think that the recent rise in extremism among young people has been because one, you go on Instagram reels or TikTok and it's literally just Nazi propaganda and the second that goes like ah, I'm not getting pussy because the Rothschilds are paying every girl to not be attracted to me and even if I was, I live with my mom and I can't do shit. Or they just turn to communism and trust me from first-hand experience you do not want to be a communist extremist generally people value their privacy everyone wants to own a home and to move away from their parents so they can grow as individuals however right now that's next to impossible with the insane housing prices literally everywhere and the most annoying thing is that it's just so simple to fix this it's literally the simplest solution to a problem that is affecting literally every person on the planet it's affecting people's wallets and souls because housing is the most important thing in your life after water on your scale of needs while there is definitely some joy to be found in raising the rent of a single mother of three who works two jobs i still think that housing should be a common good like your phone and not an investment like you're investing into lockheed martin and the solution is more houses you see you know about supply and demand right if everyone wants to buy a house but there are not enough houses the price of houses will rise and if our governments or companies don't start building more housing units we're all screwed and this is not affecting only rich countries even poor ones are being extremely affected in Yerevan Armenia where the average salary is around $660 a two-bedroom apartment here costs $120,000 and the floor space is 59 square meters or 635 square feet so for an average Armenian to buy this apartment they would need to save every single penny they have and not spend it on anything for over 15 years no wonder Armenians have a huge diaspora in the United States States. I'd go to if I needed 15 years of not spending money to afford a two-bedroom apartment. The fact that also more people are choosing to live in cities instead of rural villages is how you get situations like this where getting an apartment for yourself seems more imaginary and fictional than Lord of the Rings because today's housing market is about hoarding houses so it grows in value and the owners become rich. Not that oh let's build houses so people can get homes and we don't have engineers that have to rent and fucking hate their life and lose all hope of the future because oh now if he has a baby that is going to be expensive too you know what i might as well not have a baby because then i'm gonna have to pay rent too so you know what fuck my life housing is now treated like a lamborghini like yeah i'm actually able to afford one and you can't because you're broke or like oh this is actually my dad's a very expensive car he gave it to me slash i got it from inheritance and all we need to do is increase the supply of the houses so it can actually match the demand one of the worst victims of this is canada I'm sorry hoser, I'm gonna go in on Canada now. We talked about supply and demand, so riddle me this. The housing is already horrible in Canada. It's comically expensive and basically every young person has given up on owning a home in their lifetime if nothing changes. You see, Canada wants to do this quirky thing which is to reach a population of 100 million people by 2100, which is primarily done by immigration. It's a good plan to turn your country into a superpower because a massive population is a massive benefit. However, where are they gonna go bro the reason the housing in canada is absolutely insane like this is because of simple math they already have a huge housing crisis and on top of that they're bringing in 500,000 new people in every year while only building 200,000 new housing units now you see the math right that leaves 300,000 people every year without a housing unit with their name on it so it just turns into a dog show i'll pay 1800 for this unit 2000 4000 and it's rented by the the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corp studies, Canada needs to build 5.8 million new housing units to tackle this housing crisis. And let me tell you, 5.8 million houses are not getting built in the next six years. Call it China all you want, but you can't build houses like that in Canada because of all the bullshit that comes with building houses, such as Canada is trying to be America too bad. I'm sorry, my Canadian viewers. I love you all. I have a Canada flag wrapped around my microphone. I have a Toronto Maple Leafs hat. I have Canada stickers on my fridge and I love maple syrup i'm saying this because i love you okay
okay if canada is going to build 5.8 million new houses they're gonna need to start sucking dick or something you cannot build nearly 6 million new houses in suburbs where there are only single family units which is where the majority of new housing units are being built according to the canadian mortgage and housing corporation in 2023 240,000 total housing units were completed and out of those 54k was single family units and 185k multiple family units but multiple family meaning duplexes or triplexes where only two or three families can live in so for all i care and all that is important they could be single family units and there were 150,000 new apartment units built and space is especially important for canada because over half of canada live in a straight line like this it is very densely packed in the toronto area and that's where most major canadian cities are so because space is especially important and judging by the real estate prices in these areas it's clearly not a good idea to build single detached family houses over apartment buildings if you want to one give people houses and two put a housing unit with the names of those 300,000 people we talked about who are just outbidding each other on renting a toilet in a kitchen and later on in this video i'm going to be showing you an absolute abomination of apartment buildings that i personally visited in budapest but for now all you have to understand is big condos do not have to be commie blocks for example here's an eight-story apartment complex that was recently approved for building in downtown santa cruz california which will have 276 housing units just in this building alone for example in the commie block where i grew up in it was the shittiest out of all commie blocks it was a four-story tall khrushovka which was a very low-cost building made out of gray concrete no elevator no disability access no fire extinguishers nothing this the ussr bitch we die in this hole my building had four floors four units on each floor and four entrances here is an artistic representation i did of it and in each unit stayed around three people there are actually a lot of times four because the apartments were decent sized but let's say three in each entrance stayed four units by four floors by three people 48 people in four entrances in this concrete box was able to house 192 people and it was probably built for like five dollars because it's just concrete let me do a simple experiment jamie pull up toronto zoning laws please as you can see the yellow are where only single family units slash duplexes can be built and these little orange dots you see here and there are where the apartments can be bought now let's compare the affordability if you want to buy a two bedroom two bathroom house in this zip code you're gonna have to cuff up 869,000 canadian or 643 american and this house looks like something out of the clockwork orange and a three minute drive away from this is an apartment building where you can get a three bedroom two bathroom apartment for 429 canadian or 317,000 american that is a 51 percent decrease in price and you get an extra bedroom and the only reason this housing crisis is happening is because of the zoning laws making land artificially scarce so developers can't even build an apartment building which would house more people and help out this absolute insanity of a housing market it's the exact same story in california which has a comical amount of homeless people despite being one of the richest states they usually don't allow developers to build apartments so maybe they can solve their homeless crisis and drive the housing prices down because this is what their zoning map looks like it's even worse in los angeles where 71 percent of all land is single family zoning while having the population of my country you cannot house the population of georgia in your city when 71 percent of it is just dudes living in homes you can clearly see the disparity in this little comparison on the screen here yo and the craziest thing about this is that a lot of the reason why single family zoning exists is literally because this suburb will cost more therefore black people can't live here with me which did not work out but it was literally this uh, my wife uh, very scared from a man with a chocolate face there mm. will be in this community uh there may or may not uh they would have to be fairly well off to live in this area so they would not behave like the other oh, no. chocolate oh, face. Oh, no, no, no. 70% of an average American's net worth is their house, their primary residence. It is the biggest wealth builder for an American person. Keep that in mind. Homeowners Loan Corporation, HOLC, was a government-sponsored corporation. Its purpose was to expand people's opportunities by giving them a loan to buy a home and also refinancing. So people who are like, ah, shit, man, I can't pay this mortgage, could refinance it and not have given their houses up. And they made residential security maps, which were just color-coded maps, which told the banks where they could 
give out housing loans. So the green was the best, where all the businessmen were. So this was a go. Blue was white collar families, yellow meant working class, EU, and then we come to red. Red meant you do not give loans out to these people. It was literally considered quote unquote hazardous. Like for and what qualified a place for being color coded red was their population. Foreign born people, low class whites, which were literally Italians, but mostly black people. This is so insane to see because here's a document saying, guys, this is a red zone because 25% of this area is Italians and 25% are black. The most consistent area for marking the area down as red or green was the presence of black people. If there were a lot of black people or foreign born people, meaning Italians, then it's a no go. This is where the term redlining comes from, which is a discriminatory practice practice where services are withheld from people living in these red areas like public transport, good schools, and even food. Like these people in the green areas get to eat Georgian food and the people in the red areas don't have access to affordable and nutritious food and what's sold in their supermarkets is like fucking canned beans and shit. Redlining made buying a house in these neighborhoods impossible to buy or refinance so everyone just lost hope in these neighborhoods since their schools were underfunded and horrible, the food was bad, and generally they did not have the public services available when the people living in green areas had much more services available to them, better schools and everything. This is how you get O Block, which is how you get a bad reputation for public housing in the states. O Block is infamous for being the project, the hood. Chief Keef is from there. And coincidentally, if you look up the red lined area of Chicago, it is O Block. This is how the green lined areas of Chicago look like, even though there's not many of them, so it's clearly not the fact that apartments made this place hood. It was destined to be a poor neighborhood by the government and to concentrate poverty in these areas. I can guarantee you when Americans build apartments in the green neighborhoods, it's much better. Actually, I'm just gonna show you. Let's go to one of the green zones on the Philadelphia map, Marion Station, and look for an apartment and would you look at that, right? Of course, this is not public housing, but the point stands that the vast majority of the reason why apartments and public housing has a bad reputation in the states is that it's associated with the hoods, the red zones. However, when developers build an apartment in the green zone, it looks very nice and I'm sure a lot of people watching this would like to live there. I was laughing my ass off about these redlining policies because it's so prominent even today. Like, okay, let's look at this map, right? You see in the red line, uh, Girard College. Very red, very red line. As you can see, here is Girard College right here. And let's just take a look at what a street looks like near this red line today, okay? What? What? It looks like shit. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you guys see like how a street looks like in uh, this red lined area. Now, <laughs> now let's go to the A3, the good, the green line, the best one. You see guys, see Sedgwick station. Let's just see what it looks like. Let's just Google maps right here. Okay. Oh, wow. Al already much nicer. <laughs> Come on, bro. How are you going to compare these two? Oh my god, bro. Look at all the other fucking houses on this street. Like, oh my god, bro. This is actually insane. It's not like, okay, we just let private developers build these houses, right? And these apartments, because with populated cities that have an extremely low vacancy rate, bro, these people can price their apartments and their rent as high as they want. Do you think they care about the people? No, they don't. They want money. They'll make as much profit as they possibly can squeeze out of people, which is why government housing is absolutely amazing to combat this. Because if the government builds up apartments for just normal people, people, right? Then they enter the market. And suddenly, if you're like Vienna and 60% of your city's housing is made up of public housing instead of just some developers building it up, then suddenly they cannot name their price anymore. And this is Vienna, okay? Vienna is a very, very developed city. You know, people make good money there. It's Austria, okay? However, the fact that you can get an apartment in Vienna for like 125,000 euros is pretty cool, especially when you consider the fact that Vienna houses 2 million people and Vancouver houses 6 to 670 
25,000 people. And yeah, you can just see the price difference here. This is what happens when you give housing developers the opportunity to make housing into a luxury fine art asset instead of, hey, I want to have a roof over my head, you know? Next time you pay rent, think to yourself, do I really have to pay 100% of the money I make to pay rent? Or is it just the private companies fucking me? Also, a side note, I really don't get what issue people have with public housing, even if they are commie blocks. At least you have a place to live in and a roof over your head. I would much rather live in a shitty gray commie block than be like, oof, I guess I'm homeless now, or live with my parents until I'm 40. For example, there is this huge commie block in Hungary, in Budapest, which is the abomination I mentioned. It's called Feluhas and it houses over 3,000 people. It's just this one huge building. Like when I saw it in real life, I was absolutely cooked. I was astonished at the sheer awe of this unit. And people might think, oh, dystopia this, dystopia that. But at least those people have apartments and have places to live in, you know? Like, you know how hard it is to house 3,000 people? If you want to house 3,000 people, that's a whole ass suburb, bro. This one singular building houses nearly an entire suburb. And yeah, of course, they don't get the suburb life of like seeing your neighbor beat their meat through the window. But for places and cities that are limited in size and have a growing slash big population, what else are you gonna do? Just leave your people out on the street? Yeah, this building is called the village house, literally because it housed an entire village. And yeah, if you built like 10 of these, bro, you're now housing 30,000 people. That's absolutely insane. So I don't want to hear like shit talk about commie blocks. Yeah, I mean, I, I also personally do shit talk them, right? Because I grew up in one. They were pretty sturdy, but they're pretty ugly. And when you're surrounded by just gray commie blocks, it's not a fun look, especially in the winter. But hey, I did get an apartment. I did have a roof over my head. I would much rather that than camp out behind the Wendy's drive through and it's especially good when it's combined with good public transport because yeah you can house all the people there right like I lived on the outskirts of Tbilisi so it was kind of far away however it was 15 minutes by train to the center so yeah it's not like these comic block districts were just annihilated from society and if you wanted to go anywhere it, it was not an issue and boom like the whole process of you going to the city center from the other end of the city took 15-20 minutes and my city is the size of Singapore also Singapore is rich and i mean rich rich the average singaporean makes around fifty two thousand dollars a year and for comparison the average french person makes 43 sweden 46 germany 48k it is also the country of 5 million people densely packed tbilisi alone is around the same size as the entire country of singapore and their population is five times that of tbilisi and they do not have a housing crisis in fact 90 percent of singaporeans own a home most singaporeans live in three to five bedroom apartments that are subsidized public housing housing by the government. When people think of public housing, they think of commie blocks. But no, these people mostly live in nice big apartments with a few bedrooms and they pay a fraction of the price. Now look at this. The UK average income, $35,000. Singapore, 52k. Now let's compare the real estate prices of Singapore to London. Okay, this apartment in Singapore costs around 420k USD, has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and is 104 square meters or this much square feet. This apartment in London costs a whopping 600 160k has two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and is nearly 400 square feet smaller than the first apartment. Once you compare this to the average incomes in these countries, it's not hard to see why people are like Jesse Pinkman when looking at real estate prices. The problem is that they're very authoritarian. Like 90% of the land is owned by the government, and whenever you buy an apartment, you don't really buy it, you just lease it for 99 years. They also have an ethnic integration quota within these apartments because Singapore is a multi ethnic country. And and in the 1980s, they noticed that certain neighborhoods were being around 90% Chinese. Some apartments were being 30% Malaysian when they're a minority in the country. So they got these laws in place to integrate the society better so South Africa doesn't happen. And when you have a good housing situation, you can also solve the homeless crisis. Finland solved the homeless crisis by giving them free houses. You know what? Fuck people, right? If you want to think with the most capitalistic mindset possible, giving homeless people houses is literally cheaper than having them on the streets. Of course, Finland has support systems to help the homeless people with their drug addiction and make them become a functioning member of society. But even if they don't go into rehab or don't fix their drug problem, they still get to live in apartments that the Finnish state gives them. And trust me, bro, these apartments are good. You would have to pay like $800 a month for these apartments in Eastern Europe and probably like £1,500 in London. Housing, of course, as we learned from this video, is very expensive. Finland has spent 250 million euros creating new homes and hiring 300 extra support workers. However, they still save 15,000 euros a year 
dollar per every homeless person because of the savings in emergency health care, social services, and the justice system. So I keep telling everyone, Finland is amazing. Instead of making dystopian anti-homeless spikes under a highway, they put people in positions where they wouldn't have to sleep under a highway. Here's how you become Finland pilled, okay? First you try Finlandia and you're like, oh damn, this is good. Then you notice it says Finnish vodka. Then you notice they beat the Soviets to a pulp. Then you notice how their prisoners get treated and how they're incentivized to integrate into society instead of being absolutely shut out of society. This man is serving a life sentence for murder. I'm sorry, I'm a little body conscious as you can see. I've gained a few pounds. Then you notice they have white women. Then you notice they have nearly no homeless people. Then you notice the amazing benefits that the Finnish government gives its people. And then you go, that's based Torile Tavatan. Like and subscribe. Goodbye. What's up guys, George Bicep here. Um, Dana White personally reached out to us and said that he was going to block the video because we used the footage from UFC 289. I'm not sure. Maybe he's so mad that Ilya K.O. woke, but I'm not sure. So yeah, like, subscribe, follow both me and Gatsu on Instagram because Twitter is full of fucking bots and uh, goodbye.